If you don't find it in your box, we'll uh, get those out for you. So if we look at the pig embryo, right here we have what? That thing right there. Mackerel. Mackerel And just lateral to that is a developing mandible. And as we increase the magnification, we can see a nice ring of osteoblasts all the way around that. And some entrapped osteocytes. And we see some other portions of the mandible forming alongside that. That's all the mesenchymal bone formation. And if we go up here, we don't see, well, just a little bit of the maxilla forming along the septum. And you may find osteoclasts in that same region. In fact, it looks as though, yes, we have an osteoclast right there. So there'll be a considerable amount of remodeling going on as these bones develop as with any bone. Okay, so we'll go up to a uh, little bit older embryo. We have a palate has fused right there. We still have some more of that portions of the maxilla forming. And actually this isn't much different than the last slide. So there's that mandible right there. So we'll go to the next one here. In this one, there's more development of the mandible and also the maxilla. So here's the mandible forming, beginning to make that kind of Y shape. There's the developing tooth right there. And it looks as though we have entrapped at least part of the uh, neurovascular bundle. Well, perhaps there's an artery right there. But again, we'll find lots of osteoblasts and perhaps a few osteoclasts. Over on the other side, we have the same thing going on. And right there again, this Michael's cart. This is particular section is just the lower jaw. And there's the hyoblasts, geniohyoid, mylohyoid, and it looks as though we have the digastric right there as well. And those are all muscles that Dr. Harn will go over when you get to the soft tissues. Okay, for the tooth in situ, look at more than one slide because you might not be able to find all of the structures. So if we look at this slide and going up towards that alveolar crest, there is bundle bone right there. So bundle bone, you can see Sharpie's fibers coming in, lamellar bone kind of impinging on the bundle bone right there. So this is alveolar bone proper. On the lab practical, if I wanted you to identify the cortical plate, I'd put it way over on the other side, quite a ways away from the alveolar bone. But you can see nice cementing lines in this lamellar bone. So if we look at this, we have some resting lines in that bundle bone. Right there, a number of resting lines. And right along that interior surface, you will find the layer cells, and those will be quiescent osteoblasts. You may even find some that are active, and you may even encounter an osteoclast. So we have some resting lines. Well, there's a little bit of a dip in some of these, but for a reversal line, you want to see it's something a little bit more pronounced. So something like we have right about here. So there is a reversal line. That's the remnant of an old Auschwitz lacuna. That's where we had bone resorption going on. And then we had that reverse when we have bone deposition. Hence the name reversal line. And there's a cementing line. These normally are going to be a little bit more distinct than a cementing line. And if we look at this, <coughs> call this down, the bottom of the alveolus, come around on the other side, and not much in the way of resting lines on that side. So the bony growth was occurring on this side. Okay, those are the 
look at this, there is the outer circumferential lamella. Looks as though it has resting lines there, and that's probably what they are, but they are not given that name. So it's just part of the lamella. And you can follow this all the way around, or nearly so, around the ramus of the mandible. Then the marrow cavity is an inner circumferential lamella. We have a periosteum out here, and then an endosteum out there. And in that marrow cavity, we see inferior alveolar artery, and also we have the nerve, and perhaps some of the vein as well. And in this case, it looks as though we have some fatty bone marrow. So we have all of those structures. And we'll be coming back to this slide later on. We'll be looking at <coughs> be looking at the PDL and also the gingival fibers and also the dentin, cementum and also the PDL. Now there are a couple of demonstrations up. There's one of reversal lines and one of resting lines. The one with reversal lines has a layer of osteoclasts right on the exterior of the bone in which the reversal lines are demonstrated. And then you can also see reversal lines in resting lines on the montage as well as the other structures of that alveolar process. Okay, so let's go ahead.